very nice， 太棒了 ，very nice。Happy Chinese New Year, everyone! 恭喜发财 We're coming to you live、uh, from a temple fair at Wu Ho Shrine in Chengdu City. And what we've just seen is a performance by these little gods of happiness. They were singing a song, extending their best wishes for the new year. So, in the meantime, I would just like to ask、uh, one of them a few questions. 小弟弟你好，可以先介绍你自己什么名字？然后你几岁啊 ？My name is Tai Runsheng. I'm eight years old. Eight years old. So what were you performing just now? Um, you 刚才表演了什么呀？我刚才表演了呃，乖乖祝我哈哈笑。我手里拿的是木鱼。木鱼 ，so it's like a, is it we call it like a wooden knocker on a fish, right? 你你花了多久来练这个？呃，我花了九天。So he has spent nine days to practice this song as well as this little instrument. 你喜欢表演吗？我喜欢。为什么？ Uh, <laughs> so he said he likes performing because it's it's a it's it's a good way to showcase to the audience. Uh, 你二零幺九年的愿望是什么？愿望是考一百分。除了那个呢？打游戏。So I asked him what are his 2019 resolutions, and he said that、um, he wants to score a hundred marks for exams and also to play more games. Ah, 谢谢你了，小弟弟。新年快乐。Happy Chinese New Year! Happy 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 Chinese Hello everyone! Welcome to Chengdu Wuhou Shrine.、Uh, welcome to the Temple Fair of Chengdu, and Happy New Year! Happy New Year, indeed. So we've just seen the little gods of happiness, right?、Um, why are they called the little gods of happiness?、Uh, as you can see,、uh, the, those kids they are dressed up like the Prime Minister of Shu Kingdom, called Zhuge Liang.、Uh, Zhuge Liang, he was a symbol of wisdom in China. He helped the King Liu Bei establish the Shu Kingdom, and he brought peace and development to this area.、Uh, that's why the people of this area called him the God of Happiness. So the kids who are dressed up like him,、uh, like the mini version of him, so we call him the Little Gods of Happiness. But is it just Chu Ge Liang that is、uh, who is regarded as a god of happiness? What about say、uh, Liu Bei and other generals, for example, like Guan Yu and also like Zhang Fei?、Uh, Liu Bei was the first king of Shu Kingdom. He established the Shu Kingdom, and there are also other very famous generals like Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, who were both the the sworn brothers of Liu Bei. And one of them called Guan Yu、uh, because of his loyalty.、Uh, he was. Uh, so admired by the later generation, so the later generation called him the god of wealth because of his loyalty. Ah, so we have the god of happiness, and we also have the god of wealth. Yes. Right. So this shrine where we are at right now, the Wuhou Shrine, it's very significant because it actually it's built to commemorate or rather in memory、yes. of Zhuge Liang, right,、yeah. who was the prime minister of the Shu Dynasty,、yeah. which is actually where we are now, Sichuan Province. Yes. Yes, and it's, it's, it, it's, it was built on honor of the king of Shu Kingdom called Liu Bei and its prime minister Zhuge Liang.、Uh, right. Okay. And it's the only temple, right? If I'm not mistaken,、yes. that sort of houses both the emperor as well as the minister. Yes, it's the only place where the king and the prime minister enshrined together. Okay, I see a very big lantern. In、yeah. front of us right now, could you tell us what is that lantern about?、Uh, this is the biggest lantern of this year's Temple Fair, and it tells a story about General Guan Yu.、Uh, at that time, there was a fight between Wei Kingdom and the Shu Kingdom, and Guan Yu、uh, he led some armies to fight against the Wei Kingdom. So he、uh, occupied the higher ground. And then he、uh, ordered his soldiers to dam up several points in the river. And after several days heavy rain,、uh, the flood waters from the river finally rushed into the、uh, Wei Kingdom's camps. So、uh, the Wei Kingdom was was defeated by General Guan Yu. And this General Guan Yu, I mean, in today, I mean, in, in China itself, a lot of families they still worship、yes. General Guan Yu, yeah, right?、Yes. After so long. Yes.、Uh, After since Ming Dynasty,、uh, 
the temples of Guan Yu were built everywhere in China, and people admired him as the god of wealth. But it was interesting because I read somewhere that yeah. uh, in his lifetime, Guan Yu was very devoted to Liu Bei. He was very loyal, uh, but he also served under the uh, enemy leader, which is Cao Cao, right? So it's, it's quite interesting because... Yeah, yeah. actually, at that time, he was caught because at that time, Liu Bei was defeated by Cao Cao. So his general, Guan Yu, was caught by Cao Cao. But after killing some enemies for Cao Cao, he... he yeah, went back to Liu Bei's camp. So this is, this is how loyal he is. So Tyler, you work at the shrine itself, right, for about yeah. four years now. Yeah, four years. Um, what is it about Chinese like history that um, picks your interest, that marvels you the most? It can be, you know, within the Three Kingdoms or even beyond. Uh, I think the most interesting thing is that Chengdu Wuhan Shrine is the only place where the king and the prime minister were enshrined together. Uh, because Liu Bei and Guan Yu, they have uh, Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang, they have very close relationship. They're just like brothers, they're just like friends. So I think what we can learn to imp apply to today, maybe it's the good relationship between you and your boss uh, and the teamwork can lead to the final success. Oh, that's, that's a good one, yeah. right? The, the, the tightness, the, the loyal, the, the, yes, yeah, yes. okay, very nice. So again, we are here at the uh, Wuhou Shrine in Chengdu City. Um, so it's the ninth day of Chinese New Year today, right? Yes. And we're still seeing quite a lot of people. So is it safe to say that it's the custom of visiting Temple Fest, um, you know, in Chengdu uh, during the Spring Festival is still very strong. The custom is still very strong. Yeah, it's very strong because though the Golden Week is over, but a lot of people, they, they come here to watch the performance, to watch the lantern shows, and taste different snacks and specialties of different places. Speaking of performances, we do have some performances coming up. Uh, the yeah. later part of this stream, right? Yes, yes. Some what, aerobatic performances, yes. opera, what else? And some singing and dancing. And we have the dancers from Ukraine. And we have various shows, including different kinds of acrobatics. And some of the performance the performers, they also present the performance for the audience of all over China on the Spring Festival Gala stage. Oh, wow. So it's not, okay. So, wow, the quality is, yeah, is, is right there because yeah, it's at yeah. a national level. Yes, national level. Right, so stay tuned, guys, for that. So in the meantime, i um, just like to get my cameraman to just show you the surroundings of this temple fair. So that's the lantern of General Guan Yu. Yeah. And it reaches uh, 20 meters high. How long did it take to actually build that lantern? I think it took over one month to finish it. So it's, it's daytime now, but if you come during the night, you would see the whole place yes. being lit yes. up, so that'd be very yes. pretty. Yeah, it's very beautiful decoration of the night. Tyler, talk to us about Temple Fest, right? Um, how has Temple Fest evolved over the years? Uh, in the very beginning, the Temple Fair uh, was held for the worships of gods and immortals, but eventually uh, it just be, it, it's kind of a way to celebrate the spring festival for common people. So people come to the festival to watch the performance, to watch the the lantern shows, or taste the food from different kind of places. Uh, and I think nowadays the temple fair is also a way to experience the culture and the history more. Because like us, for example, we present different kinds of exhibitions during the Temple Fair. Uh, this year we have an exhibition of the collection of fans. And we also ha have another exhibition of a very famous calligrapher. So through those exhibitions, uh, the audience can get closer to the... To promote the Chinese yeah, yeah, culture. Yeah. So it used to be more uh, traditional, right? People come to pray, rituals, but you said yeah. it's become more fun, more yeah. engaging, yes. right, these yeah. days. Okay. But it is nice today because um, it's still a lot of people, but we still have some space to at least walk yes. and explore. Yeah. Could you give us a sense of where we are right now at the shrine itself? Like, because I understand that you have the uh, relic section, you also have the Qin Li ancient street. Yes. So where exactly are we right now at the shrine? And now we're at the western part of Chengdu Ho Shrine. Actually, Chengdu Ho Shrine consists of three parts. The, f the first part is in the middle, is the cultural relics area. Okay. And on the left side is the Jingli street. It's a bazaar street full of different kinds of specialties. And now we're in the 
right side of the cultural relics areas. So it's, it's called the western part of Chengdu Huashuan. Western part of the Chengdu Shrine. Yeah. But Jinli Street is, uh, is amazing. I love Jinli Street. Really? I've never been there before? I've been there twice. Yeah. I think Jinli is a representation of Chengdu as a city. Yes. It's very laid back. It's got a lot of tea houses, yes. cafes, bars, arts and crafts. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, um, it's, a con it's a kind of combination of the traditional culture and the modern culture. So where are we headed to right now, Tyler? We're we heading to the food market. Ah. Yeah. So the zodiac of this year is pig, right? Yeah, so on pig. top, as you can see, all the lanterns are all. Yes, the lanterns. Yeah, if I'm feng shui. of the lanterns is based on the Chinese zodiac. So last year is the year of the dog, and this year is the year of the pig. So you can see the lanterns of pigs everywhere in the temple fair. So what we're seeing, what we're being surrounded right now on the left and right. Are um, some pictures? Because from, from several years ago, we did an investigation of different uh, Three Kingdoms uh, relics and remains. So what we do is to make sure that all the re relics, all the remains are still there and we record the information and the statistics of those relics and remains. And maybe in the future we're going to uh, publish a book of, about this investigation. Wow! So basically, it's research going I under the research. ground, collecting all this information about. Yes, yes. Okay, but three kingdoms. I mean, speaking a little bit about history, you may have to enlighten me a bit about the history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it didn't last very long, isn't it? For the whole, yeah. relatively. Yeah, for just eighty years. Eighty years. But it's a very significant time in Chinese history, even though it's, it's relatively a short period. A lot of bloodshed, um, uh, war, but heroes have emerged as well. So the significance of it regarding to this shrine till today it still plays a very important role. I think because there are so many heroes, so many different kinds of characters of that period. So many artists, uh, they uh, created some novels and dramas about that period. And that's why... Uh, it is so popular among all, among China. I guess every Chinese they had chance to read a novel called The Romance of Three Kingdoms. Yeah, Three Kingdoms. Yeah, Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Three Kingdoms. yeah. Oh wow, I smell food. Yeah, we're at we're the food the street. Market. Yeah, food streets. And uh, let me present you a very special one. Special one. Okay, yeah. should we just get a cameraman to just zoom into? Okay, what is this? Uh, it's called Guo Kui. It's a kind of deep fried pancake, and. Inside, it's, it's, it's deep uh, fried, so it's very crunchy. And inside, uh, there is pork or beef. It's only available in Chengdu, in I Sichuan. So, yeah. Very much a local... It, it originated in Chengdu, in Sichuan. But Sichuan is very famous for the spice, right? They call yes. it like mala or xiangla. Yeah, so spice. does this pancake have any spice inside? Uh, it has pork and beef inside, but I think it's not that spicy. So I think it's good for everyone to eat it, though you're not very good at eating spicy food. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, pardon me because uh, my, my voice is a bit hoarse today because I'm still recovering from a, from a flu and fever. But it's okay, I won't let that dampen my spirits yeah. at the temple fair. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got the fried pancakes. Yeah. What, else is, um, yeah, what else is the local specialty over here? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this way. Many food vendors, and all yes. these are actually from, from different places. Not just, well, not yeah, just from China. China, yeah. You can see the the peach soup. The peach soup is from Beijing. And that's like durian, right? Liu Lian. Yeah, yes, and it's durian with cheese. Do you like durian? Uh, no, no. Uh, me, me too, me too. But uh, oh, we've got barbecue. It's a very famous uh, Sichuan local. Yes, but this is not the, the style of Chengdu. I think it's. It's not a local style. It's a squid with the uh, pickled peppers. And of course, here we've got the Chongqing Xiao Mian noodle from Chongqing, uh, another city very next near to Chengdu. Chongqing is, uh, so I think, if you drive, it's just about three and a half hours away. A yes, municipality it's southwest. And you can see another kind of pancake from Shanxi. We call it Rou Jia Mo. So are these like uh, food stalls only open during the temple fair? Yes, only yeah, only open in the temple fair. And, uh, what do 
we have in front of us. This is the uh, bang bang ji, yeah, it's kind of boneless chicken. This is this one's very spicy. Without bones. Yeah, without oh. bones. Yeah, because who likes bones, right? Yeah, it's always yeah, easier yeah. to eat without bones. So it cooked very well in the uh, in the very beginning, and then we mix them with very spicy sauce, and the sauce is cold. Cold sauce. Yeah, cold sauce. So it's a little bit different from the hot part. Wow, nice. Okay. So Sichuan is very famous for its hot pot, right? Yeah. Hot pot, it's barbecue, it's um yeah, but it's nice to just be in a temple fair where you can experience like a variety yes. of snacks. And this is a kind of bao, this kind of dumpling from Tianjin. Gou bu li. Gou bu, yes, gou bu li. Oh, this one on the left. I, I always see this in... Um, this, is, this is very traditional. San da pao. Yeah, yeah, so you can actually hear it from a mile away, right? Yes, yes. It's like all... Yeah, you can hear the sound, yeah. So this uh, is it's sweet, right? It's meant to it's be sweet, a dessert, yes. right? And it's, and it's made of rice balls. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit sticky. Why is it called like Santa Pao? Because three big cannonballs, because before right? Before it, before it made well, you can hear three the, the sounds. So it has to pop, it has to bounce three yes, times yes, before three, it... Three times, bounce for three times. To make it elastic, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I always hear it, like when you're walking along the street and so you... It's so, it's, so it's also kind of performance. Yeah. Okay, we'll just show it one more time to our audience. San Da Pao. Cannonballs, right? Cannonballs. Do you want to have a try? Okay, thank you. Maybe you can have it. Me? Yeah, you can have it. Okay. Oh, it's quite, it's pretty. Yeah. Okay, I'm having a bit of sore throat, so I won't try it, but, but you, you can try it. Because I got my teeth fixed, so I can't eat it. Okay, but we will save yeah, it for later. Pity. <laughs> pity. <laughs> but it's okay. You, yeah. you can carry it now. It's very sticky, so. yes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and you have different kinds of noodles. So for those who have just tuned in, we are coming to you live from a temple fair at uh, the Wuhou Shrine in Chengdu City. And we're now walking towards the main, main, stage. main stage, right, where the performances will be held. Yeah. Wow, we see a crowd there. What? Oh, what's that? Uh, it's called the Electric Techno Prince, Dian Yin San Tai Zi. It, it's a kind of combination. Uh, it combines, techno? Yeah, techno? In a temple? Yes, so it, it combines the very traditional folk dance with the modern electric music. Wow, it's, it's definitely my first time seeing yeah. something like this. Normally we we uh, we would watch lion dance, right? Yes. But for this one, it's a different sort of like a I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of like it's, a parade, another kind of parade. Is this very common across China? I think uh, it's very common in the southern part of China. I think you can also see it in like Fujian's, yeah. 
electric techno dance. Electric techno prince. Prince. Yeah. And they even wear the sunglasses. Are they able to um, to to say a few words, or they just dance, right? They don't. They can't like send you good wishes because they're wearing the mask, so I, I they don't can't know. talk, yeah, right? They can't talk. Okay. Okay. And some their images are based on some from some Chinese very traditional opera. So it's a kind of combination. Is it specifically Sichuan Opera? Yes, yeah, Sichuan Opera. Right. Okay, very nice. Let's move on to the main stage yeah, right now, sure. perhaps. Okay. So the crowds that we're seeing at the Temple Fair, I can see that um, a lot of local Chinese people, right? So what has been the, the trend like over the years? I mean, in terms of the number of ticket sales, number of people coming to Temple Fair. I think uh, last year, the tourist numbers reaches uh, over 1 million. So, at the Temple Fair? Yeah, at the Temple Fair. Wow. Yeah, and I think the, the numbers of recent years are very similar. So it's quite a stable growth, stable, right? Yeah. And out of this one million, right, during the two weeks, right? During two weeks. Two weeks, right, one million, right? Are they mostly from China? Do we have like foreign tourists as well? What about, yeah, yeah foreigners' I attention? Think, yeah, mostly they're from different places of China, but we can also see some foreigners, foreign visitors, they came to the Temple Fair. On our right, we can see a few food stalls. Yeah, different kinds of fruits. And also the snow peach soup from Beijing. It's very good for health. For the if you, if you cough a lot, maybe you can, you need drink this kind of. Oh my God, I need one now. I need yeah. one now. <laughs> Lao Beijing, old Beijing, right? So I think the performance is due to start in what in five minutes. Yeah, in five minutes. Very nice. So we have come to this. So this this whole place is a shrine itself, right? Yes. And um, normally performances are only held during the Spring Festival. Yeah, yeah only on this main, this main stage. Let's get nearer to the stage. What is the, uh, what is the first act coming up? Uh, is it a... Is it, I yeah. think it's at 4.30. What is it? What, what kind of dance is it? It's a kind of folk dance. Yes, and those and those local folk dance. Local folk dance, and those performers are from the Chengdu Art and Culture School, and they also present the performance. Uh, yeah, on the Supreme Gala. Yes. That's the first act. Yes. Yeah. So stay tuned. In just a couple of minutes, we'll be watching the um, a folk dance, local folk dance, yes. right? You can see crowds coming through. So Tyler, before the performances start, right, before it gets a bit yeah. too noisy, uh, again, uh, to our audience, we're coming to you live from the Wuhou Shrine in Chengdu City. Chengdu is known for pandas, it's known for hot pot, for good food, for being just, you know, a very lovable city, right? Yeah. So how would you um, sell this shrine to, say, our international audience? How would you promote it? Why should one come here? Uh, first, I'd like to say welcome to Chengdu Wuhou Shrine because Chengdu Wuhou Shrine is the only place where 
the king of the Shu Kingdom and the prime minister of Shu Kingdom were enshrined together. And uh, Chengdu Ho Shrine consists of three parts. Uh, the first part is the temple of the king, and the second one is the shrine of the prime minister. And we can also see the tomb of the king, yes. And this is the one and only tomb of Liu Bei, because as you know, uh, the emperors from ancient China, they have several different tombs all over China, but for Liu Bei, he only got one tomb. And this is the one only tomb for Liu Bei. And Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang, they're very renowned figures. I mean, even people who, who know the Three Kingdoms, right? Uh, yes, yes. And you can see there are lots of dramas, comics, and video games about Three Kingdoms. Inspired by yes, that. inspired by that. And it's, also, it's not only popular in China, and also very popular in like South Korea, J Japan. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, definitely. So we're still waiting for the performances to start. But again, this shrine is built uh, in memory of yes. the state of Shu, which is now Sichuan province, Liu Bei, as, and also its prime minister, Zhuge Liang. Yes. About 1,800 years ago, right? Yes. 1,800 years ago. I was just counting it. Yes, and Liu, the, the tomb, Liu Bei, is the original one. This is the folk dance, right? Has yeah. it has it started? Yeah, yeah. Has it started? Yeah, it started. And you can see on the backdrop there is a lotus because the lotus in in China uh, it also stands for good fortune. Yeah, lotus exudes a sense of peace, yes. right?
video myself. Oh my god, amazing. Amazing performance. It was it was amazing. I enjoyed my Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. And we will leave you right now because the performance is like 45 minutes long. I'm not sure if you can hear us. It's a bit noisy. Here. Yeah, it's a little bit noisy. But you can see the crowds and um, yeah. <laughs> Happy Chinese Year, everyone. Thank you for joining us again on this live stream. We are now here at the Temple Fair at Wuho Shrine in China City. And this is Thailand. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Happy New Year.